This is E.T., and this here is Rudell Stitch. Stitch was ranked number two welterweight in the world in the late 1950s. He hailed from Louisville, Kentucky. Now, that's a town in a state where, over the years, a lot of boxing greats were sired. Uh, Davey Moore. Who else? Uh, oh, former heavyweight champion Marvin Hart. I did a video on him. Jimmy Ellis. Uh, Jack Blackburn. Blackburn, himself a great fighter at the turn of the 20th century, taught Joe Lewis the art of boxing. Somebody else hailed from Louisville. I'll talk about him later. Rudy Alstich, born in 1933. He's gone from this plane in June of 1960. As an amateur during the mid-1950s, Stitch advanced to the National AAU semifinals. In 1956, he turned professional. He was in the welterweight class, 147 pounds. Bud Bruner was his trainer-manager. His early career, well, bumpy. He had several victories, but then lost, I think it was twice, to Art Glass. The problem was his workload. He had to support a wife and five sons. Boxing had to rank number two to that full-time job at a meat packing plant. Nonetheless, Stitch did stay fit, and in August of 1956, he got the big break. It was against number two ranked welterweight Isaac Logart, and the fight was held at Jefferson County's Armory in Louisville. So hometown fans saw the unranked Stitch pound out a 10-round victory. Then in 1958, September, by the Ohio River, Stitch saved the life of one Joseph Schiffkar. He was an Army Corps of Engineers worker who had fallen into the river and sank. Stitch happened to be fishing nearby, got over to and grabbed Schiffkar. But then both of them lost their footing and were swept away. Stitch, however, was able to keep Shifkar upright. But both are being swept over rocks. Finally, another man was able to grab one and then pull both to safety. In 1959, Rudy Stitch beat veteran Yama Bahama, then Chico Vejar, 12 pounds heavier than Stitch, and highly regarded. So Rudel Stitch in late 59 is close to a title shot. But he's got to beat ranked, highly regarded Gaspar Ortega. Now this fight was held in New York, Madison Square Garden. And during the third round, there is an accidental clash of heads. Ortega is dazed. Stitch could have rushed in and gotten a KO over Ortega. But Rudy Stitch allowed Ortega time to recover. The result, Ortega won by a split decision. The next few months of 1959 went pretty well for Rudy Stitch. In May, he received the Carnegie Hero Fund Award for saving uh, Shifgar. Then, days before the 4th of July, Stitch KO'd Rudy Sawyer. This was in the first round, and it was seen on national TV. Stitch is now ranked number two welterweight in the world, and he fights undefeated Louis Manuel Rodriguez, who later would win the welterweight title. And Stitch lost that fight via another split decision. Stitch then went on to, in October of 59, take on number three ranked Ralph Dupas, soon to become junior middleweight champion, and he won, Stitch did, by unanimous decision. And a few weeks later, Stitch beat Holly Mims, a top middleweight. Unfortunately, 1960 proved to be Annus Horribilis for Rudel Stitch. That's Latin for not a good year. 
After knocking out Charlie Tombstone Smith, Stitch lost a rematch. Why he took it, I don't know. But he lost a rematch with Dupas. Then, in June, Rudy Stitch went fishing again. It was behind the McAlpine Dam, and this is a day before he's set to sign a contract for a rematch with Rodriguez and is scheduled for July. And with Rudy Stitch fishing are his manager's son, Bud Bruner, and a friend. Now, the account of what happened is pretty well known in Louisville, but not known nationally. It goes like this. Stitch's friend falls into the Ohio River, and it's very high and uh, rough in June. He pulls Rudell in with him. Well, Stitch made it to shore, but he heard his friend yell, so he returned to the river to pull him in. Both are in waders, and they are wearing heavy clothes, and they're both pulled under, and both drown. Rudell Stitch's death preceded by one day, his signing for a rematch with Rodriguez. In July, Rodriguez did fight, but it was against former champion Virgil Akins in Louisville. Now one-third of the gate went to Stitch's widow and children, and that happened because of the promoter, Bill King. So all promoters named King are not bad. Bud Bruner, by the way, worked in Rodriguez's corner that night. Uh, Rodriguez won by unanimous decision. Well, honors followed Stitch's heroic death, the one from the Carnegie Hero Fund. It was a silver medal, and it had a Bible verse. It was from John 15, 13. Many of you know how it goes. Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. That would have pleased Rudy Stitch, an elder in the Hope Presbyterian Church. He would have likewise been happy to have seen his visage displayed in 2013 on a giant Louisville mural that had previously honored Louisvillians, including but not limited to Harlan Sanders and Another boxer that I referred to earlier, who, by the way, sparred often as an amateur with the much smaller Rudell Stitch. Now, a local promoter remembered that fighter sparring with Stitch, and that promoter said this, and I'm quoting, This young man would leave every day, and he said, I'll be back tomorrow, and I'm going to get you then. Then a week later, he'd come. He never did get to where he could handle Rudell Stitch, unquote. Just months after Rudell's death, this young man who used to spar with Rudell took Olympic gold in Rome, his name Cassius Clay, later Muhammad Ali. While you're on YouTube, by the way, check out Mickey Clark's Song for Rudell. It's on his... Uh, Reasons and Rhymes album. This is E.T. Do not forget to subscribe if you have not done so. Type in your comments below. Hit the bell icon and you'll be notified of new uploads. Although I've heard complaints that YouTube is a little slow on this. And share these videos on social media if you will. Thank you.